All the models that Bentley make have got something in common. They are luxurious, they are powerful, they are very British and they are very exclusive. But even inside that bracket of cars that very few people can actually afford, there is a hierarchy. Yes, even Bentley has a flagship. It's called the Mulzahn. It's five and a half meters long, over two meters wide, and at 2.7 tons, this single Brit weighs as much as an entire American family. So it's big, it stands out like facial hair on a three-year-old, and yet at the same time, it packs a huge amount of stiff upper lip. It's full of superlatives and still wonderfully restrained. It is a thoroughly modern car in its technology and its construction, but it hasn't forgotten where it's come from. It's taken elements from the very history of Bentley, from the S series and the R class, and it's turned it into a thoroughly up-to-date package. This car doesn't so much announce your arrival at the front door as it does make your presence felt at the entire venue. It is, of course, handmade. Not just hand-assembled, mind you, but handmade, like the panel that forms the D-pillar at the back of the car. Two craftsmen shape and form molten aluminium by eye until it's exactly right. Then they attach it to the rest of the car by a brazing process using brass, because no other metal will allow them to get the seamless finish that's required. It's an intensive attention to detail that permeates the whole car, and it's a large part of the reason why it can command the price it does. You know that expression, time is money? I think Bentley might have invented it. Although this car is over 8 million rand, you can't simply distill that down into the engineering and the exotic materials. There is also the time factor. 125 hours for the body shell, 175 hours for the interior, over 500 hours to build a Bentley Mulzahn. To put that in perspective, in the 15 hours it takes to make this steering wheel, 15 BMW 3 Series will pop off the production line and then all be sold for less than you'd pay for one of these. In terms of what one company can do in their efforts to create one of the world's most exclusive automobiles, the Mulzahn is a supreme example, which of course means nothing if it's horrible to drive. Well, it's got selectable driving modes, an air suspension, and a six and three quarter litre twin turbo V8. So no, it's not horrible. What it is though is surprising because even though it's got over a thousand newton meters going through the rear wheels, it's just not brutal. But it is relentless and it will get up to some serious speed. 0 to 100 takes just 5.3 seconds and getting through the 8 gears of the slick automatic takes no time at all. Although we didn't get a chance to really stretch its legs, we met a man who had. His name is Wing Commander Andy Green, and if you haven't heard of him, don't worry, neither had we. But you know Usain Bolt? This guy's faster. Trained by the Royal Air Force, Andy Green is one of those people whose life seems to be constructed of a never-ending stream of great adventures, including becoming the first man in history to travel at supersonic speeds on land. Holder of the world land speed record, he's also what Bentley call a Mulzahn visionary, and we chatted to him about a particular day he spent at the Bonneville Salt Flats. I was lucky enough a couple of years ago, uh, Bentley approached me with uh, an idea that they had for uh, telling the story of the, uh, the new Bentley Mulzahn. So we were lucky enough to spend a couple of days out there with a the Bentley Mulsanne, just looking at what the car could do, conducting what became the world's fastest interview, 300 kilometers an hour. The car drove to the salt flats pretty much straight from the showroom. It came with standard tires, bumped it up to about 3.3 bar. Watching this car struggle to get away from the line, 2.7 ton car um, on a slippery surface, and it just didn't make it look difficult. And it would get up through 100, 200, 250, approaching 300 kilometers an hour, and it was still rock solid. And we did actually not just get to the book speed of 290, we actually did get to 300 kilometers an hour. At altitude, in the, uh, you know, on a slippery surface, that surprised me, surprised Bentley. The best thing about this car, all that power and all that dynamic ability doesn't overpower the rest of the package. In fact, it just about underlines what this car is about. From the glass switch gear to the massaging seats, this thing is about having the best of everything on tap. Not to mention in intense detail. There isn't a single centimetre of this cabin that isn't covered in thick carpet, wood, chrome or leather. And that includes the inside of the cubbyhole. The design can appear a little uh, 
classic with a vertical center stack and an orgy of buttons, but even so, it never lacks class or comfort. Along with an immense spec list, there is of course an immense amount of personalization too, including 25 different shades of seatbelt. Our test car was generously kitted out, with the total bill for the optional extras coming to about the same as you'd pay for an Audi R8. I am not a Bentley fan. In fact, even if I had 8 million rand lying around, I probably wouldn't spend it on one of these. But after driving it for a while, I've come to realize that no Bentley is just the sum of its parts. And the Mulzahn in particular is about class and about heritage and about the best experiences in an extraordinary package. The twin turbo V8 pushes out over a thousand newton meters, but never in a way that makes this super saloon feel uncomfortable or unstable, and it will hit 300 kilometers an hour. The Mulzahn is an exceptional balance of power and luxury. Some elements may be too old school for some, but there's no doubt it is a very special car.